welcome back to Project Kermit. So I've got the fuel tank sorted, it's uh, been flushed out and it's all ready to go. But before I fit that, I'm going to sort out the brakes. Because without the fuel tank in the back here, I've got excellent access to sort out the hard lines on the um, rear axle. The brake system is going to be a slightly awkward mix of Imperial and metric fittings. Which is actually how Land Rover did it throughout the 80s as far as I can gather, so <laughs> it's in keeping. On the brakes themselves, on the rear axle, they're imperial. Um, when it comes to the flexible lines, I've gone with metric, simply because these ones which were uh, intended for a discovery, I think it was, um, I was able to get those loads cheaper. That's these ones here. They do have the same pipe in common, so it'll work out. As I've shown you before, I'm going with Cunifer for the hard lines. And I've got a bunch of... I have done a bit of this before, but I've got a bunch of new tools to help me out, so we'll see how we get on with those. We're starting here at the back, and if I put the flexible pipe in, that'll give you some idea of what's going on. So we've got... Uh, which way up am I going to go? Right that way up. So this has got its own little bracket down here. So of course on the front, each wheel gets its own flexible brake line. On the rear, you only need one, and then we need to get from here to the brake over there, and from here to the brake over there. This is a load of scrap twin and earth electrical cable, and I reckon I can use this to make a pattern and then copy that. Obviously this is quite easy to bend, but should hold its shape. And this is a bit more wiggly. So I'll use this one. Come out of that. Background on ourselves a bit to so make an S. Up there. Up there and into there. So I'll do is just straighten that out, get the length, and then I'll shape this up again. First of the new tools, this is a teeny weeny pipe cutter. I have got one for plumbing, but it doesn't go down small enough. That's one of the other tools I've got. This is uh, bending pliers. And they're quite cool. I can see these being useful for um, metal working and yeah, forging. Right, I'm just going to put the tiniest chamfer on the ends here. Probably can't even see that, but that's what the instructions call for on the for this, the flaring tool. I did have a brake flaring kit before. This is it here, you can see it's not been used for a while. And when I've done brakes in the past, like for the other Land Rover, this is what I've used. But it has to be said it was pretty rubbish. So as with all draper tools, it was complete crap really. Um yes. <laughs> So much so, I think most of the, the dies here actually broke. Anyway, not using that. So this will be my first time out using one of these tools instead. Tiny pot of special grease. <laughs> Warning on there not to eat it. It does look quite yummy, I guess. So. OP1, Operation 1. So some of these tools press in to do the forming and this one obviously turns, it screws in to do that, which is why you need the um, dab of grease on there. This end is imperial, so that's the type I've just made. So on the other end of this pipe, I need to put a metric fitting, which is slightly different to the one I've just put on the on that end. And after considerable bafflement at these instructions, <laughs> I've discovered that this kit only does imperial, which is very disappointing. 
I should have realised that. It's my fault, but it's still irritating. In the meantime, I've got an imperial end to go on this one, so this is the other axle line. And I suppose I, at least I can shape up the pipes. And I can run the line from the flexi pipe going to the bulkhead. Because that's metric female fittings, which I can do. The line that's going to go here from the flexi pipe all the way out to the other side of the bulkhead, all I'm going to do is put the fitting on the end of the what's left of the roll and form it as we go. So this will be a double flare. Then put that in. Put that in. Bring some one first, yeah, that one. Put some grease. And then this time, turn it around. And we're going that way. Yep. And see, what you see now, that's for the female, female fitting. In this loop here, the pipe actually passes really close to a couple of holes that are already in the chassis. One there and one down there. And I'm thinking these would be a good opportunity to use some riv nuts in those holes and then I can use P-clips to grip onto the pipe. This is the riv nut kit. There's another cheapo eBay special. But actually, for 20 quid or so, <laughs> you get an awful lot of kit. So it's like a giant riveter, well it is a giant riveter, but it rivets nuts instead of rivets. And then this is the P-clip I was on about, this little thing here. That really is a much nicer fitting than, say, a self tapper or something like that. That's not going anywhere. So until I can fit these metric fittings on here, that's as far as I can go with this slot. So I will tweak it somewhat, just make it look a little bit neater, and I'll put the P-clips on to these shields. Other than that, all the hard work's done. So now that's all there, I'm going to put in the fuel tank next. Remember that was all clogged up, it was all good as new. I'm just popping it in place so I don't drop anything in the tank. Well I've almost got the tank to fit. <laughs> almost, but not, not here. At this end it's grey, it's hard up against these mounts. That's all solid, that's fine. But here, this part of the tank is up against the cross member. And I don't really like that. I dug out a bit of rubber sheeting and I did have the idea of just dropping this, tucking the sheeting in and then pushing it back up again. But <laughs> that is, it's just not quite right, is it? 
So this part of the tank actually slopes. Um, I'll try and show you. So you should be able to see there that this part of the tank, the back of the tank, actually slopes quite steeply inwards like that. Upshot being, if I could lift the tank, then it wouldn't be touching along here anymore. So I'm going to try and do that. And I can do that by taking this lip off. And that should give me at least six millimeters of upward travel. It's in. It's been in and out a bunch of times. I've had to get the, uh, the, the round file on a couple of the holes and open them up a tad, but it's there. It's now mounted on four bolts, all properly in place. I haven't done them up yet because I'm going to go around with, a, um, with some black paint. That's where I hammered that lip in. Just going to flood a load of paint in there. Just right there we go you can see a, no contact along the whole of the top of the tank now so we've achieved a gap <laughs> there's no contact between the top of the tank and the rear of the cross member finally that's about as much as I can do down this end for now until I get the other um, brake tool push it back and have a go at the other end so down this end of the truck, what I've been puzzling over is how to get the flexi pipe to go from its mounting point here down to join the caliper down there. Now the people that sell the conversion kit will supply a great big one of these, but it's at a great big price as well, so I won't be doing that. What I got to try and suss this out was this little pipe here, which is a defender part, and I got the defender bracket. So on the defender, this bit goes into the caliper, this comes round into there, and then it goes, the flexi then goes up from that up to there. So I wasn't expecting this to just fit, but I thought it might give me a head start, um, and it hasn't really. The, I can use this little pipe, but even that, not as it is, I'm going to have to reconfigure it, but this doesn't fit because this whole section here is different on a Defender, it turns out. And this bracket, I did consider modifying it, but it would take so much modification to, to be useful, I might as well just make one. Then, last night, I was rooting through the stores, uh, looking for all the bits that I'm going to put over in the brake section there, and I found these. So this has come off of Kermit, and this is a same sort of thing in a sense, flexi pipe, small pipe and a bracket, but this bracket instead of going on the top here goes on the side. So I can still use this bracket. What it will mean is rebending this pipe somewhat, so instead of it coming up here it's got to go over here, but then it can still loop back on itself. And then this will go in here and come down something like that. So that bracket there has got to be tweaked just a little bit so that this bit here doesn't rub on the shock. But it will come down there and then that will allow plenty of movement um, for to allow for the uh, suspension travel.
it's turned up at last. This is a brake flaring tool that's going to look exactly like the current one. If we open them up, and at first glance they look exactly the same, but if you look carefully, the metric version on the top has got square shoulders to it, and the imperial version doesn't. Now this is one of those things I did <coughs> an awful lot of reading of the Land Rover forums and looking at YouTube channels and all sorts of stuff, looking for some definitive information about brake pipe flaring and which styles to use. Now the fittings is easy because you've got metric and imperial and they're quite identifiable as different. But it's the actual, it's that flare on the end of it. And what I found was some, I mean, the, to start with, the forums are hopeless when it comes to something definitive like this. It's just people's half-baked opinions, as you'd expect. I mean, they're just forums with people like me just having a go at, uh, at fixing Land Rovers. As far as I could tell, a lot of people have been using this format, which is the SAE format, for Imperial fittings like this one, but also for metric. And that's not by the book. But obviously there's lots of vehicles out there with the, you know, the wrong um, flares on them and they're not leaking uh, brake fluid and the brakes are presumably working fine. Well, I know they're working fine. So I wondered how could that be? And the answer is that all these replacement pipes that have been fitted are either made of copper or, which is very soft, or copper nickel alloy like this, the conifer, which is only slightly harder. And both of those, if you've got a slightly wrong size on here, well, slightly not size, slightly wrong format of the flare, it will mush into place when you put it in the fitting. So if it goes in the TPs or whatever it is, as you tighten it up, because this is soft metal on the end, it will conform. So using the SAE flare for both uh, Imperial and metric male connections seems to be fairly standard practice. So obviously people have been getting away with it But I'd make the argument. It's a bit like if I invented some kind of contraption that made a three-pin plug But didn't make it very well, but I said it's fine because when I mash it into a socket It will take up the right shape That might work too, but that's not best practice either is it? So. That's my take on it. Anyway, in the search for a definitive answer, I ended up going to the uh, 90110 uh, official Land Rover service manual. So that's the service manual from the uh, early 80s. Even that is a tad vague, really. Um, so we've got a section here. So this is section seven at the front of the manual, talking about metric identification and with a section on hydraulic fittings. And the bit I wanted to show you is down here. Convex pipe flares, which are what I'm talking about, the, that's the, so the end of the male fittings, are uh, shaped differently for metric sizes and when making pipes for metric equipment, metric pipe flaring tools must be used. So there you have it in black and white. That's as close to a definitive answer as I could get. So you need DIN for metric and SAE for imperial. And that's when it comes to the shape of these ones, the male ends. For these ones, for the female ends, it's the same with both. So in my case, this shape does both for the uh, imperial and the metric. I hope that's cleared something up because <laughs> that was really troubling me for a couple of days. Um, I feel happy about it. Hopefully you do too. Now I can get back to work. So I put the fitting on and Clear up a bit. Right, one last look at the difference between the two then. So I've got the yellow one is metric and the silver one is imperial. So I do hope this has demystified it for well anyone who's interested, <laughs> if there is anyone out there who's interested. Because it had me baffled and uh, Yes, I feel a lot happier about it now, to be honest. 
Right, all these fittings, I'm just going to put a tiny bit of copper grease on the threads. Future me will really appreciate that. A bit of grease on these. There's the rear brake lines all installed, tightened up and secured in place. So I've got these two screws here I'm going to take out and put in those little brackets I've painted. So it turns out it was completely pointless buying these brackets, these defender brackets, and somewhat pointless buying these little pipes. But I can at least make the pipes work, or well, I think I can. Either way, it's not a big deal. It was only a couple of quid each way. Well, that's going to go there and then down to there. Plenty of clearance there, and there's still plenty of clearance there, so that's happy with that. So there it is, that's the finished layout. Yes, I'm happy with that. I'll take this off now, I'll use it as a pan to help me make up the other one on the other side. Then I'll get those, get the, all this stuff on the other side installed and that'll be a, as I say, giant leap forward, that'll be a minor step forward, but an important one. What we have here is a pair of pedal boxes from a fairly late Defender, I think they are. I wasn't actually looking, this is the brake one, I wasn't actually looking out for that. I was looking out for this, which is the clutch one, uh, following a tip off, and I must say thank you to Glenn for this, or another top tip. And it's the reason this is much better than the original series and the very early um, 110 and 90 um, clutch pedal boxes is the spring. So you've got a spring here, which works very differently. So the the series spring is just, well, it's like this. It's just a return spring. With this setup, you apparently have a much lighter clutch, which can only be a good thing. So when I found this, it came as a pair with the brake pedal box. And that worked out pretty well because I'm going to be fitting the servo and the master cylinder all brand new and not series three either so this should all go together the action is really nice no play in there and it's smooth as you like so a good purchase as it turns out well i've hit another snag <laughs> so last night hoping to get ahead of myself a little bit after i painted this the pedal box I went looking for the other components, so I've got the master cylinder, which is the um, OEM quality one, and a servo. And then I noticed immediately, something I should have checked ages ago, the servo is not going to fit. If we look at the layout of the studs here on the servo, and <laughs> I think it's fairly obvious even without measuring, that's not going to fit straight to that. So of course, I thought, oh, I've bought the wrong servo, but I haven't. I very carefully chose the servo and the master cylinder. What I've done is, is bought the wrong uh, pedal box. Well, maybe not the wrong one, mate, just not quite the right one. 
but I can fix this. Yeah, I don't want to mess with that, but I can fix this. So I've drawn a little plan of what I need to do. Basically just mapped out where the studs need to go. Nice being able to weld at full power without worrying about the inverter cutting out. So there we go, that's the new plate welded in and I've just run some stitch welds. There's no point fully welding it, no point at all. Down at this end there's a bit of extra weld around the back there and I've welded well, that, about a third of the inside of this circle. And with the paint on the inside and the out, I think we've got reasonable uh, rust protection as well. Right, that's that. So, not too much of a setback. Let's give that a few minutes and um, well, I can think about putting it in the bulkhead. Normally when fitting the pedal boxes, there's a gasket that goes here, a big thick one. Uh, I'm not going to use it because I haven't got it. Um, I've seen people make up strips of foam going there, um, sticky back foam. I'm not going to do that either. I'm going to use the uh, flexible gutter sealant, same as I did to stick these in. It's, I think it would be ideal. I might be wrong. I could make a gasket, but then I'd have to make all these holes, and that would be really boring. I do think this will actually seal better than a gasket would. For those of you wondering what a servo is, it's basically a Force multiplier is the easiest way to think of it. So when you push down on the pedal, this magnifies your force, same as having a big lever on the pedal. And I was going to say it makes the brakes stronger, but it doesn't make the brakes stronger, it makes them easier to apply. So you need less pedal force on the brakes. So the, if you're a feeble person, then it would make the brakes stronger, if you see what I mean. Now, we've got some plumbing to do. Put it down here first before I wrestle about with it in the engine bay. So I'm just gonna go, yeah, in there.
So I need about six foot of Cunifer pipe to finish the braking system. I've got that much. <laughs> I've ordered more, but it's going to take a few days to get here. In the meantime, I'm going to have a bash at the exhaust. So I haven't even offered this up yet. So I can't actually remember if this was a Discovery or a Defender on the listing. It doesn't really matter because they're very similar chassis. Yeah. It will fit if I force it in there, it will fit, but it's an interference fit with the mount. There is that on there. Well, there's <laughs> some cutting and shutting to do. Well, the issue is I've run out of um, conceptualization space in my brain for this. I can't quite picture the whole system in one. So what I'm going to do is just start with that downpipe, sort that out. That will bring us to here. And I'm sure the rest will fall into place. Now I've looked again at the entire system that I've got and I think overall it's exactly the right length. Which means it doesn't give me any, uh, <laughs> any surplus that I can chop up to use for this little cranked piece that I've got to make. So I need a 57 millimeter outside diameter, which that isn't. Yeah, none of this. Let's go and have a look outside. There might be something out there. If there is anything, it'll be over in this rack in the, uh, what do I call it? The rough storage area. I have no idea where this is from. It's massive. Uh, these rubber mounts might be useful. Like this. This looks actually very similar to what we've got in there new. It's more than I expected. <laughs> actually. It's not even got any holes in it. Oh. <laughs> yes it has. Alright. <laughs> it's not really a treasure after all. <laughs> Uh, Wacking great hole in the silencer. This though, I think I can use. The tape is just there for a rough guide for the grinder. So we're after something that's going to go like that. <laughs> so if I do something an inch. By making these pie cuts and then stacking them, I shall get the bend. We <laughs> can test that now and see if that's anywhere near looking right. This has got to be cut off at some point, but I've forgotten where. And let's offer it up and have a look. So there's the little stub is bolted in. There's the engine mount we're trying to miss. Let's see how it looks. Five mil clearance at its closest at the moment, which is a bit a bit snug. So we've got sand, some off the back of this one and off the back of that one. 
then, body close. See now it's coming down the tab in that plane. Now it's just a case of uh, filling in all the gaps. The trick is being able to spot when it's about to blow through, because it's it is thin wall section tubing after all. So if you can spot when it's about to blow through and then stop, just wait a moment and it will cool down straight away and then carry on. Anyway, once it's all fully welded, I can sand it. I'll have something to sand without, going, without the risk of going through the pipe. And I should be able to get quite a reasonable finish out of this. So this is flat. So you can see instead of coming straight up now, we've got a crank to it. Next step is to clean all this off. There it is after a little bit more clean up. So I've just gone over it with um, 80 grit. I think that'll do this. It's only an exhaust downpipe. If you're wondering what it looks like inside, it's, I haven't cleaned it up at all inside, but it's not too bad. I know you can't see that far down, but it's yeah, it's pretty. There's no big lumps or pokey out bits of MIG wire or anything in there. So I'm just going to leave that as it is. Let's uh, offer it up then. Uh, right and now there is plenty of clearance between the exhaust and the mount. With the Downpipe all properly bolted up. The other end of the downpipe's not really in the right orientation. I mean, if, we, if, we, if we carry it like that, it's just going to hit the ground. Series exhaust went over this cross member. This is the detachable cross member. Well, it's a detachable now, it wasn't originally. Um, went between the cross member and the gearbox. I'm not going to do that because this is a much wider exhaust than the original. I think if I do that, it's just gonna it's gonna knock against either the cross member or the gearbox. So I think the best thing to do here is to cut it here, and then rotate that so that this bit is poking up about an inch lower. That pipe would then be in a better place. Because the moment we're on the maximum travel of the um, flexi section, which means it's not going to be doing much isolation. Well, it's taken an unreasonable amount of faffing about, but <laughs> here it is. This is what I'm going to go with. So what I've been trying to do is to lay it out so that the rear two sections of the exhaust system are stock. And that means that in the future, when I come to replace the exhaust system, you know, when it's worn out, um, I'll only need to mess about with the downpipe. These two bits will just be drop-in replacements. And I've almost achieved that. Uh, I've got it laid out correctly, laid out in a way that that's going to be the case, except for the mount. 
So this mount here, I'm going to cut off and just move it round the tower to here, and I'll make up something that drops off of here. This is where the series exhaust um, was attached. So we want it to go here, up there. There's one down there, and then one under this cross member. I think I can reuse. I can use that one as as is. Tell you what, if I just use a bit of thread bar instead of this rod, I can bolt it in there and there and weld it onto that. That'd be that one done. To be able to make out the mount that's tucked under there, I'm going to cut that off and bring it this way a bit, and then this I'm going to bolt onto the cross member like that. It's hanging, it's hanging all by itself. Really. It goes in a nice straight line for the main part. We completely clear the axle. It's not going to hit anywhere over there. Let's clear this part and then the tailpipe just sticks out the back. So that's absolutely cock on. <laughs> Which is taken all day. Start here. And we clear the mount, which was the crucial beginning point. Underneath, and we clear here as well. All these welds, I'm going to grind them back and sand them. I'm also going to paint the whole exhaust yet. Anyway, we come along here. There's our first join. There's a bracket. And we come along here. That one mounts to there. Remember, but there's a missing rubber for that. And we come along here, we miss the axle, we miss the chassis, we miss the spring, and we pick up here on a bracket, and then it exits an inch out the back. That took some doing, but we're there. I must admit I was a little frazzled by the time I finished last night, but looking at the exhaust system again in the daylight, I'm really happy with it. <laughs> I'm going to take it off now, just clean up the welds a little bit, and then paint the whole thing. I've got some high temperature paint. That uh, claims to be silver, although, well, we'll see. I suspect it might be more grey than silver. Let's have a look. Oh, it is. That's nice. <laughs> well, that's probably a good place to end this episode, so I'll see you next time. Cheers! <laughs>